Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're gonna do a deep dive comparison between the Asus ROG Ally and then the Valve Steam Deck. These are probably the two most talked about handheld PCs right now, and I know there are people out there considering getting one over the other. So that's what we're gonna focus on here in this video today. Now in terms of just technical specifications, that's not really my strong suit. If you wanna learn more about benchmarks, things like that, there was a good video released by ETA Prime yesterday. I'll leave that link down below. And then also my friend The Fox just got his review unit. So he's working working on something as well. I'll leave his channel link down below too if you want to check that out. Instead, what I'm going to focus on here is about 20 different characteristics that I think are important when making a big purchase like this. We'll talk about things like comfort and ergonomics, and then just the overall experience of using one of these over the other. So if you are thinking about buying one of these or maybe switching over from the Steam Deck to the Ally, I think this might be helpful for you. It's probably going to be a long video, so go ahead and grab a drink and your favorite snack, and let's go ahead and dive in. All right, as we get started here for a baseline, I'm just going to assume that you know a little bit about the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally already, like you've gone to their websites and looked up the specs, or maybe you've watched a review or two. And so as I talk about each of these categories, I am going to go a little bit in the weeds with the understanding that you at least know the basics. For our first category here, we're going to talk about size. For example, you probably already know the Steam Deck is a rather large handheld PC, and that the ROG Ally is supposed to be a little bit smaller. And for the most part, I would agree with that. After all, the ROG ROG Ally is a little bit smaller than the Steam Deck, but all the same, when it comes to just portability, you know, carrying it around, it's about the same. Both of these devices have large screens and a pretty luxurious control scheme as well, which means that you're not going to feel very cramped when playing it. But all the same, in order to have that kind of larger size, it is going to make the device bigger overall as well. And yes, I would say overall, the Steam Deck is larger. It has these trackpads right here on the front, which do make it have a larger size, but then also because it has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio on the screen, it's a little bit taller as well. But my main point here in this section is that the difference is not that significant. For example, this case right here, which is my favorite one for the Steam Deck, is a really great fit for the Steam Deck itself. It basically just fits perfectly. You can even use the kill switch case and it works as well. I've done a whole video about this. But when you actually get the ROG Ally inside of the Steam Deck case like this, it actually isn't a big difference. As you can see right here, there's a little bit of wiggle room, but not much. And so I expect in the future that companies will be making cases for this device, but there's nothing that fits it perfectly just yet. And so I was surprised to find that by using the Steam Deck 1, it was a pretty good fit. And in the end, what that signifies to me is that the size difference between the two is not that much. So if you're thinking it's gonna take up less room in your backpack or just easier to take around, I'm not really sure about that. The way I framed it in my review video is that if you think that the Steam Deck is way too big, then the ROG Ally is still gonna be too big for you. However, if you think that the Steam Deck is just a little bit too big, then maybe the ROG Ally will be the perfect size. In the end, yes, the ROG Ally is smaller, but they're still both pretty big. Now let's move into a category where there are some stark contrasts. That's gonna be the screen. Now, both of these devices have a 7-inch display, but that's where the similarities end. For example, the Steam Deck has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display compared to 16 by 9 on the Ally. That means that the Steam Deck one is going to be a little bit taller. And then the screen resolution is different as well. The Steam Deck is 800p, whereas the Ally is going to be 1080p. And what this means is that for any PC game that doesn't support 800p natively, you're going to have to probably play it in 720p instead. Not only that, there's a big difference in refresh rate. So the Steam Deck can go up to 60 hertz altogether, whereas the Ally can go up to 120 hertz, the first handheld that can do that. And while the device is not powerful enough to play like AAA games at 120 frames per second, the 120 hertz screen has a lot of nice benefits to it. For example, with 120 hertz, that means we can scale it down to some rounder numbers. For example, 60 hertz, 40 hertz, and even 30 are all easily divisible by 120. And that means if you want to play games at a locked lower refresh rate, it's going to be very easy. And then the other benefit that comes with that 120 hertz refresh rate is that it has VRR, or variable refresh rate. This means you'll have support for advanced features like FreeSync. And so if you play a game and it has a variable refresh rate, like it's going between 40 and 50, it's still going to feel very smooth. Now, when I'm playing a game, I typically will not actually stare at the numbers. I'll just kind of play it, and then when something happens where I feel a hiccup, then I'll take a look. And I found that when using the ROG Ally, when I have a higher refresh rate and I'm just playing, I didn't notice any sort of dips at all. Now, of course, the frame rate will fluctuate, for example, with Horizon Zero Dawn right here, but all the same, it's a very smooth experience. And so that's one of the benefits of the ROG Ally screen. 
Now, there are some other factors to consider. For example, if you get the high-end Steam Deck, it will come with an etched glass screen. And that's what I have on my Steam Deck, and it gives it a bit of a smoky texture, and I really like it. And so if you are playing in like a brightly lit environment, you won't see those reflections as much. Now, the screen on the ROG Ally has what they're calling anti-glare, and it's definitely less reflective than something like a piece of glass, but all the same, it is more reflective than what's on the Steam Deck. And again, bear in mind that the etched glass version of the Steam Deck is the one that's $650. Now, in terms of color balance and accuracy, the ROG Ally wins again. And there's been a bunch of different tests on the internet to show that. that basically, the ROG Ally is about 99% accurate, whereas the Steam Deck is something around 80% instead. And if you look at this side-by-side -side comparison right here, I feel like the Steam Deck tint is a little bit on the green side. And bear in mind that I'm using a saturation plugin here on my Steam Deck, so it has an additional 10-15% of saturation. Either way, out of the box, I do think that the ROG Ally has a better screen when it comes to colors and accuracy. Now, one additional benefit of having that taller screen on the Steam Deck means that 4x3 content is going to look bigger as well. For example, when playing a Super Nintendo game, you can see right here that we're getting about six and a half inches of screen real estate on the Steam Deck, but only about six inches on the ROG Ally. And so if you are looking to play retro games in as big as a screen as possible, then the Steam Deck is going to win there. Next, let's talk about the overall brightness and dimness of these screens. I think this is really important when it comes to just playing around the house and outside and things like that. Now, Asus says that the ROG Ally has a 500 nit screen, which is pretty bright for a handheld. And I think Valve says that theirs is 400 nits, but other people have done tests and found that it is actually, in fact, a lot brighter. And in a side by side comparison like this, you can see that at max brightness, the Steam Deck does look brighter than the Ally. But for me personally, I never really play these devices outdoors, so brightness isn't really a huge factor for me, but what is, is dimness. And that's because most of the time when I want to sit back and play a game, I'm usually doing it like in the evening time in a darker environment. And in this regard, the Steam Deck takes the cake. This one is much dimmer than the ROG Ally when they're both at minimum brightness. So if you wanted to have one specifically to play in a very dark environment, like in bed at night, then the Steam Deck is going to be a better pick. So in the end, I think that both of these devices have good screens, but they have different purposes. The 120 hertz panel with the variable refresh rate means that you have just a lot more freedom and flexibility with the ROG Ally. And when you combine that with the higher resolution and color accuracy, I think that, that one's going to be the winner here. Next, we're going to test audio quality. Let me give you a couple caveats here in the beginning. Number one, I think these both have very good audio quality. They're some of the best that you can find in any other handheld device bar none. Part of that has to do with the fact that they both have front firing speakers and they sound excellent. And in this test right here, I'm going to do 100% volume. So you'll get an idea of the volume between the two, as well as the clarity of the overall sound. And honestly, I'm a little bit torn between these two. I think that the ROG Ally has a really good mix between the high and the low ends. It just has a very balanced sound. Meanwhile, I would say that the Steam Deck has a little bit of a crisper sound. The high end notes really stick out from the rest. And so overall, I would say that one's a little bit brighter and clearer. And honestly, I don't really have a favorite between the two because they are both excellent. Anytime I play either of these devices, I'm usually very impressed by the sound. And so for this, I think it's about a tie. Next, we're going to talk about the controls. This is going to include the buttons themselves, but then also the ergonomics and overall comfort. And let's start by talking about the Steam Deck first. This one has some really chunky grips to it, which makes it really easy to hold like this. In fact, this feels like holding like an Xbox or PlayStation controller, but in a more tablet kind of style. And so because of that, I just really love using the Steam Deck. It feels very natural to hold like this. My fingers just naturally grip on it. And then, of course, I can access the shoulder buttons and triggers very easily as well. I also like the four function buttons on the back. These are completely programmable, and I never accidentally press these. They're a little bit harder to press down on, but I actually like that feature. It means I have to be very deliberate when I press down on them. And when it comes to the D-pad and analog sticks, I think they're very good. The analog sticks themselves are a little bit smaller than like a console's controller, but all the same, I really do like them. And same thing with the face buttons. They're a little bit on the small side compared to a console controller, but again, I think they're a very good size for the device itself. Now, the ROG Ally is a bit of a different experience, and I go into detail in my review, but the gist of it is that it's a flatter experience. You end up pushing your palms directly into like these parts right here on the controller, and so because of that, you're just kind of holding it a little bit more flat like this. 
And honestly, this is still very comfortable, but it is a bit unnatural. I had to train my brain to basically hold it like this. But once you figure out the control scheme, it does all kind of fall into place. For example, my bottom two fingers rest right here, and then my middle fingers are above these back buttons, and then the top ones are right here. And like I said, this is a comfortable experience. I can play this for hours on end and have no cramping whatsoever. Now there are a couple things I don't like about the controls. The first one here is going to be these back buttons. I ended up pushing these a lot more than I expected I would. Now thankfully these are programmable or you can just turn them off, but then also within the default settings, it has it set so that if you press this and then another button, it'll do a function. And that ends up working out the best for me. For example, initially I had this set to just show the desktop and that was a nightmare because I would accidentally press it and then all of a sudden I was booted out of my game. And so that's one of the things I don't like about the ROG Allies controls, which is this design of the back buttons here. Now the analog sticks and D-pad are also very good on here. This one has a circular design to it, but it feels more like an Xbox One or an Xbox Series controller. I think it's rather good. And again, I went into detail about this in my review. Also, the analog sticks are very good. They feel like a smaller version of a console's one as well. And these have a nice range of motion and smooth feedback too. I also like the fact that they have RGB lighting around them. However, something that also needs a little bit of work on the ROG Ally are the face buttons. These have a little bit of play or wobble to them. And that means that when you press down on them, they can kind of move at a different angle. Now I've heard other people say that they've had buttons that stick when they're playing on it. That doesn't really happen to me. I think it happened one time in the entire week that I've been testing. Other than that, it's very hard to replicate that, at least in the way that I play. However, what bothers me is that wobble because it gives it a clackier sound. Let me give you a test right here. Now, by contrast, there is much less play on the Steam Deck buttons, although they are still rather loud. Let me give you a sample here. So for me, the volume difference between the two is not that much, but the overall feel is much more stable on the Steam Deck than the ROG Ally. And then finally, within this section, I want to talk about like gyro and trackpads and stuff like that. Now, the ROG Ally is capable of gyro, but it's not enabled in the software just yet. And so I have not been able to test it and get it working, but that's probably going to be coming in a software update. Now, of course, the Steam Deck also has gyro, and a lot of people really like that. It has these sensors on the analog sticks that if you just touch them with your thumb, it's going to enable the gyro. And so a lot of people use that for precision pointing with like first person shooter games. And when it comes to the overall amount of control options, the Steam Deck is going to win hands down. Number one, it has these trackpads, which means that if you're going to be playing a game that doesn't really work well with controllers, you can use these instead. A real-time strategy game where you're going to have mouse movements are going to be really handy on here. And I know there's a lot of people who enjoy playing first-person shooters with these trackpads as well, especially when they combine that with the gyroscopic controls, they have a very precise movement. And then on top of all of that, there is the Steam Control function within the Steam Deck. This is something that's been around for years at this point. It was first implemented with the Steam Controller, and it's just been building since then. And so Valve has many years of research and development work with their control schemes. And it's amazing. You can set different profiles and configurations per game, and they all work really well. And on top of that, you have community controller profiles. There's just a million different ways that you can configure each and every game on the Steam Deck. The ROG Ally is trying to do that. They have a gamepad profile option and you can set it on a per game basis within their Armory Crate software. But all the same, they are years behind the Steam Deck in that regard. And so overall, when it comes to controls, I think both devices are very good, but I would say that the Steam Deck is a little bit more natural to hold in your hands and you have a lot more control options with the trackpad and then all the Steam profiles and things like that. Okay, next let's talk about the I.O. or the ports that they have available on each of these devices. And honestly, they're about the same. Up top, you can see you have very similar options, a power button, volume button, headphone jack, and then each of them have a single USB-C port here on the top. Now the ROG Ally also has a special connector. We'll talk about that in a later section. And they both have SD card slots, although the ROG Ally's on the top and the Steam Deck's on the bottom. I really would have liked to have seen USB-C port for either of these here on the bottom. And this is something that we see in a lot of other handheld PCs, just not these two right here. And it's unfortunate because it would be really nice to have a dock like this. This is the INEO multi-dock station, but it has a little bottom port right here. So you can just plop your device directly onto it. And then all of a sudden you can charge it, hook it up to a TV, all those things that you want to do with a dock. And all you have to do is just set it inside. Meanwhile, for both of these devices, you'll have to use a dock like this one. This is the official Valve one. You'll basically put the Steam Deck inside and then you'll plug it in like this. You'll still get all the access to everything here on the back, but all the same, it's just one extra step. This is kind of a pain. 
And I do want to mention here that the official valve dock does not fit with the ROG Ally. It's just a little bit too thick. However, the third-party docks, like this one here from iVoller, has a little bit more space, and so this one does fit very nicely. But again, you're going to have to use that overhead charging thing right here. Another thing to think about, too, is that the third-party docks, like this one here, are rated for 45 watts and not 65 watts of power. And that's because the Steam Deck itself takes a max of 45 watts, so that's what the manufacturers made. And so if you are going to use a Steam Deck dock like this one, it's not going to charge as fast as it would if you used a 65-watt brick. And of course, I do expect to see third-party solutions sometime in the future. Future. Either way, when it comes to I.O., it's very similar between the two, and I'm kind of disappointed in both by not having a port in the bottom. However, in this category, I will give the ROG Ally a leg up because it does have that special proprietary port, which we'll talk about in a different category. Okay, up next, I want to talk about the software experience of using either of these devices. Now, the Steam Deck ships with what they call Steam OS, and this is basically a Linux-based operating system created by Valve specifically for the Steam Deck. And I think it's a very good setup. It's a console-like experience in the fact that you can navigate through your games, but there are some nice features. For example, if you go into the library, you can see all the Steam Deck games that you own, and there's a special tab that says Great on Deck. And so you can actually see the games that are gonna work really well with the Steam Deck too. And the reason why they have this category in the first place is that not every game is gonna work on the Steam Deck. It's a Linux-based operating system, so it either has to run on Linux or a special Proton layer. And we'll talk about that more in the game catalog section. For now, we're really focusing on the user experience. Another aspect here is the fact that you can go directly into the Steam store. And so if you are heavily invested into the Steam ecosystem, you can basically just stay within this and have everything you need. Not only that, you have the ability to launch into what they call desktop mode. This is basically gonna be a full-fledged Linux PC experience. Experience. And so within here, you can use the trackpad to move around like a mouse, and then you can install apps or maybe do some productivity right here. But of course, bear in mind that if you're not savvy with Linux, this can be quite unintuitive. Meanwhile, the ROG Ally is like the opposite end of that spectrum. This is a Windows-based handheld PC. And so the way I like to think about it is that it's basically a laptop without like the keyboard function of the laptop itself. So if you think about it, all those experiences you've had on a Windows PC, you will also have in the ROG Ally for better or for worse. For example, any PC game that works on a Windows machine will work on here as well. So all those different game stores and everything else like that will be available on the ROG Ally. And of course, if you prefer a Windows desktop environment, this is going to give you a full desktop replacement. You can basically hook this up to a monitor, then a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, and then all of a sudden you've got a full desktop right there. Now, of course, the Steam Deck can do that as well, but you will be limited to a Linux distribution. And it's also possible to install Windows on the Steam Deck. You don't hear about it as much, and that's because it's a little bit unintuitive and quite an advanced topic. Either way, if you do enjoy the Windows experience, you want to have all the flexibility that comes with that, then yes, the ROG Ally is going to win in that regard. And I have to say that navigating through just regular old Windows on a handheld like this is kind of a pain in the butt. And so overall, when it comes to navigating through a Windows experience, I think it's basically required to have an external keyboard and mouse if you don't want to pull your hair out in the process. And I think that's part of the beauty of SteamOS with the Steam Deck is that you can basically just use the controls right there and everything's going to work fine. It gives you a more console-like experience. And you can kind of get there with the ROG Alley. They have their own special software called the Armory Crate, and that basically allows you to navigate through the games and launch them from there. But you have to remember that's just another app that's layered on top of Windows itself. So it's still going to be a very Windows experience. And there are many times when you're actually going to need to have a keyboard and mouse anyway. And a lot of that has to do with the stability of the software. So let's move into that category next. And this category is probably one of the hardest for me to make a judgment on just because the ROG Ally is very new. It's not even released yet at this point. Meanwhile, the Steam Deck's been out for over a year and so they've been tweaking that software like crazy. But there are a couple things that we can touch on and number one is going to be sleep mode or suspension. When it comes to the Steam Deck, it's a pretty nice experience. You can be playing a game and decide that you want to pause it and all you have to do here is just tap on the power button. It's going to put the device into sleep and then from there, all you have to do is just tap on it again and you're right back in to your game. Now it's not perfect on the Steam Deck. I've heard that there are some games that'll just straight up crash if you try to do suspend mode, but for the most part in all my game playing, I've never really had an issue. And so I really do enjoy it. Meanwhile, on the ROG Ally, you have the same sleep function that you do on any other Windows PC. And so if you own a Windows laptop and you try to close the lid or put it to sleep, it's gonna be that same experience. But there are
there may have been times where you actually put your device to sleep and you come back to it and all of a sudden it's wide awake and you're trying to figure out how that happened. It's a very common occurrence on Windows. There's just some ghosts in the system that do that. And unfortunately, it's gonna be a similar experience with the ROG Ally. It's gonna be the same thing with any other Windows-based handheld PC. So for me personally, I only put it in sleep mode if I know I'm gonna come back to it in a few minutes. If I wanna leave it overnight, I usually will just actually turn it off. And so from a pure functionality standpoint, I do think that the Steam Deck has a better suspend mode. It's just a little bit more reliable. And speaking of reliability, the other thing is that the Asus software is a little bit buggy right now. Now granted, SteamOS was pretty buggy when it came out too, but all the same, when we're talking about what we have to deal with right now between the two, I think that the Asus one is just a little bit worse. One of the most common problems I'm having right now is with the command center. When I try to bring this up and then switch between the different performance modes, it'll often hang up or maybe take a full minute to swap between them, and that can get really frustrating. On top of that, there have been many times when the gamepad itself just doesn't get recognized properly. And so I tried to toggle between the desktop and gamepad modes here in Control Center and nothing seems to work. There have been hours that I've lost in my testing because these two things mess me up. And of course, some of this has to do with the fact that this is an early test unit and the software is still in development. But all the same, when we're comparing the two as they are right now, Steam Deck is just way more stable at this point. So I think it is a little bit too early to make a judgment, at least for this category here, but I did want to bring up these two points. Okay, next we're going to talk about battery life, which will lead into our performance comparison too. To start, let's bring up this graphic here from my review. And there's a few things I want to make a point of. Number one, if we try to play it at the lowest settings here with like GameCube, for example, we can expect about three and a half hours of battery life on the ROG Ally. And then also make note right here with SteamWorld Dig 2 on silent mode, which is an eight watt TDP, we were getting about three hours of battery life altogether. And then finally with Horizon Zero Dawn with a 14 watt TDP on 720p low settings with a 40 frames per second cap, we're getting about two hours of battery life altogether. And when it comes to low power performance, trying to play some lightweight games, the Steam Deck is much better in this regard. If we look here with SteamWorld Dig 2, you can see in the top left, we have all of our metrics. And what I wanna focus on right here is going to be the overall power draw, which is a little bit to the right of the battery percentage. And you can see with this game, the full power package is about six and a half watts altogether. And right below that, you can see that the estimated remaining time here is over six hours of gameplay. As a reminder, on the ROG Ally, I got about three hours of gameplay. Now that was with at 120 hertz versus 60. But even then, if I tried to play this game at 60 frames per second on the Ally, I would only expect about three and a half hours. And so the difference here between over six hours and three and a half hours is quite significant. And so if you are looking to play low spec games, then the Steam Deck is gonna win hands down. Now I'm hoping that people in the community or even Asus themselves can fix these power profiles at the low end and so we will get better battery life, but at least as it stands right now, the Steam Deck is winning handily. Let me give you another example with low power emulation. We're gonna use Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo. Here on the Steam Deck, you can see we're getting a total power package of about six watts altogether. And again, you can expect about six hours of battery life in that regard. Meanwhile, the same game on the ROG Ally has a 12 watt total power draw. And so again, right here, I would expect about three and a half hours with the Ally. Now, as you start moving things up, it gets a little bit more interesting. For example, the Wii U can play at the silent power mode on the ROG Ally, and that's gonna require about 14 watts altogether, which is not that much more than the bottom floor of 12 watts that we saw with the Super Nintendo. Meanwhile, the Steam Deck has to work a little bit harder to get this game running at full speed. And so because of that, the power draws about 16 or 17 watts for Wii U. And so when it comes to mid-tier emulation, the ROG Ally will probably actually give you better battery life. And I think a lot of that has to do with the more advanced chip that's on the ROG Ally. It can just play some of those harder games with a little bit less effort. And I think that's gonna be the sweet spot when you can find it, is to play those games that are not gonna take as much effort to actually run really well compared to the Steam Deck. And so with this next point here, in order to really capture it, I have to kind of move over into the performance comparison as well. So let's kind of do that together with the battery. And let's start here with the Steam Deck. I'm running this at 720p resolution with a 40 frames per second cap with low settings. I've also turned on FSR to ultra quality. And you can see here, we're getting a pretty stable 40 frames per second. You're definitely gonna see some dips here and there as you're playing it, but all the same, I think this is perfectly playable. And if you look, the total power draw is about 15 watts. And according to them, that's gonna last about two hours and 45 minutes. And if you remember from my battery life testing with the ROG Ally, I used these exact same settings and got a little bit over two hours. And so with this game, with the exact same settings, we're actually getting better battery life with the Steam Deck. 
However, although you are gonna get less battery with the ROG Ally, you're gonna get much better performance. For example, if I remove the frame rate cap from 40 frames per second and just kind of let it go buck wild, you can see here that the settings are gonna be closer to like 55 or even 60 frames per second here with 720p and low settings. And you can definitely feel the smoothness here compared to something like the Steam Deck. And so if I had two hours to kill and I wanted to play this game and I had to choose between these two, I would much rather play on the ROG Ally than the Steam Deck. However, if I wanted to play for three hours, then obviously the Steam Deck is going to be my choice there. Now, the other benefit of having the Z1 Extreme chip that I have here in the ROG Ally is that it can do a lot more. So for example, I can increase the resolution to 1080p from 720p and have a much sharper and clearer picture. Of course, I'm not gonna have that really high frame rate. Instead, it's gonna be around 30 frames per second, but all the same, it's very playable and it looks gorgeous. And of course, bear in mind that we're just using the middle performance profile. We have an entire turbo mode that we can also use. And so if we try to play the exact same game at 1080p with low settings, we can get about 40 frames per second when we use turbo mode. Now, of course, bear in mind, this is gonna eat up your battery even more. So it's only gonna last about an hour if you play it this way. But if you only have an hour to kill, this is a great way to experience it. And so in the end, you've got a lot of flexibility with the ROG Ally. It really depends on your preferences. Do you wanna play something with lower settings and get a little bit better battery life? Or do you really wanna push it to the extreme? When it comes to the Steam Deck, you don't really have an option. You basically can just optimize it to play on that device and then just use those settings. And so I think it's really hard to make a battery life and performance judgment between these two devices because they are two different use cases. I think when it comes to low-end gaming, there's no question the Steam Deck is gonna be better. But if you're trying to play some of the higher-end games, you know, they're gonna run better on the ROG Ally and it's really gonna come down to what you favor the most. Longer battery life, better performance, better graphics, all those kinds of things. In the end, I think the ROG Ally does give you more flexibility in that experience. Next, we're gonna talk about the overall docked experience between these two. Too. With the ROG Ally, this is a Windows-based machine, and so because of that, if you hook this up to a monitor and keyboard, like I mentioned before, it's going to be a lot easier to just do everyday PC tasks. You want to send an email to your grandma, you want to do some light video or photo editing, I would say that the ROG Ally is just going to feel more natural if you are accustomed to Windows first. And so when it comes to just docking this and using it as a PC, I think that you would probably have a better time with the Ally unless you are a fan of Linux in the first place. However, what I want to focus on here in this category is what it's like to game in a docked experience between these two devices, and it is kind of night and day. To start, when you dock the Steam Deck, it's a pretty nice experience. You basically have that exact same console experience, but now on a larger screen. But when it comes to performance, it's going to be the exact same thing. And so when you plug in the Steam Deck into the larger screen, that's basically it. You're going to get a larger screen. And so when you're playing a game that looks perfectly fine in 720p on the Steam Deck screen, when you're playing it on a 55 inch TV, it's not going to be the same. It's going to look really muddied and kind of watered down. In fact, I found that the best use for docked mode with the Steam Deck is going to be when playing retro games, things where it doesn't really matter having a high resolution, things like that. So it can become like a retro gaming console, but all the same, when it comes to playing a PC game, I kind of would rather just play it on the smaller screen because it doesn't look so bad. Meanwhile, with the ROG Ally, it can be a different experience. I have mine set up that when I plug it in, it'll automatically go into turbo mode, which means it's gonna pull a full 30 watt TDP as you're playing it. It's gonna improve your game significantly. Now, turbo mode is kind of a nightmare in handheld mode just because it'll drain the battery super fast, usually an hour or less. However, when you actually have it plugged in, it will charge the device and then also give you those 30 watts and it's a great experience. Experience. For example, with the Steam Deck, you can play Horizon Zero Dawn at the same settings you can in handheld mode, so 720p with a 40 frames per second cap. However, when you plug in the ROG Ally, it's going to flip over to turbo mode, which means you'll be able to play at 1080p and still at about 40 frames per second. And the difference between the two in terms of quality on the screen is night and day. And so this experience, to me, has been very similar to how it is when you're playing on the Switch. In handheld mode, it's going to use lower specs, but you don't really mind because it's a smaller screen. But then when you plug it into docked mode, you will often get a higher frame rate or better graphics and so that's a much better experience and with the ROG Ally it's basically the same thing and so for me I actually look forward to docking up the ROG Ally and playing like that meanwhile with the Steam Deck it's something that sounds really neat until you actually put it into practice and you realize that it's just going to give you kind of a muddy screen now there's one other secret weapon for the ROG Ally and it's this right here this is the XG Mobile this uses that special connection on the top of the ROG Ally, which will then connect to this, which is an external GPU and power supply all in one. Not only that, it works as a dock. So we have our USB ports as well as our HDMI and display port and then ethernet as well. 
And so this is a nice solution if you want to have an external GPU to have even better experience when it comes to playing docked. And there are currently three different models of this. This is the oldest one here. It is an RTX 3080 inside. Someone loaned this to me. Thank you very much for the loan. And unfortunately, it doesn't work with the ROG Ally yet. Their software still needs to catch up. Either way, that's one of the three options that we have. There's also the 6850M, as well as the 4090, which isn't out yet, but it's coming soon. Bear in mind, these are all mobile GPUs, so they're not gonna be as powerful as their desktop counterparts. And these are all very expensive. They're between $1,000 and $2,000 each. It's just crazy even saying that out loud. But the idea here is the combination of the ROG Ally plus that will be a full desktop replacement. And so if you're already thinking about getting the ROG Ally and you don't wanna have a second computer, you could use something like that instead and then just use it for both. And of course the graphics performance on this should be phenomenal. And so as soon as I have it working, I will make a video about it, but it might be some time. Either way, when it comes to the docked experience between the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally, I definitely prefer the ROG Ally. Number one, you have the ability to use turbo mode when plugged in and you will have much better performance than on the Steam Deck, but you also have the flexibility of using the XG Mobile if you've got the money for it and want to go down that route too. Okay, all this talk about battery life and performance got me thinking about the cooling system. So let's talk about that one next. To start, there are a couple differences between the two. The ROG Ally has two fans, whereas the Steam Deck has one. And when it comes to cooling and fan noise between the two, I think the ROG Ally is better. And so what I'm gonna do here is a real world test. So I'm gonna push both of these devices to their limit, and then we'll have a listen to what the fan sounds like. So we're gonna use Final Fantasy VII Remake right here, and I'm gonna use turbo mode with the ROG Ally. And you can see that the overall temperature is spiking at around 70 degrees Celsius right here. So let's go ahead and take a listen to the fan with the volume off. Next, I'm going to turn up the volume to the point where I can hear it over the fan itself. And right here, it takes about 30% volume to get to that point. Next, I'm gonna turn up the volume to the point where I don't really hear the fan anymore. And for this, it takes about 75% volume. Now let's do the same test on the Steam Deck. We're looking at about 80 degrees Celsius right here when pushed to the max. And now let's take a listen to the fan noise. Now, in order to hear the game audio, I found that I needed to go to about 40% volume right here. And in order to get to the point where I didn't hear the fan as much anymore, I had to go to about 75% volume as well. Now, admittedly, I don't really mind fan noise. I kind of like it when machines sound like machines, but all the same, I know that people out there don't really like that sound. And so if you are looking for a lower volume, then yes, the ROG Ally is gonna give you that. And bear in mind, this is the loudest that I could make the fans. And so in just general use, it's not gonna really get this loud either, unless you're really pushing it. Now, one other aspect when it comes to cooling is how hot the device gets in your hands. And surprisingly, I found this to be basically a non-issue for both of these devices. Both of these handhelds do a very good job of keeping the heat focused in the center of the device. If I had to make a minor nitpick about it, I would say the very tips of my fingers can feel a little bit more heat on the ROG Ally, and that's because the fingers are spread out a little bit more on the back of the device. But again, I was pleasantly surprised to find just how cool both of these devices are, even when you push them to the max. Okay, the next category is going to be the overall games catalog. Now this is kind of a weird one right here. To start, it looks like a very easy win for the ROG Ally because this thing runs on Windows. So any Windows game is gonna work on this. That means if you wanna play Destiny 2 or Call of Duty, they're all gonna be readily available here on the Ally. Meanwhile, the Steam Deck will be limited to the games that run on Linux or through its Proton compatibility layers. For example, I have 285 games currently in my Steam catalog, 
but only 129 of them are actually labeled as being great on deck. Now there's probably many others that will actually play on the Steam Deck, but all the same, that's about half altogether that are actually gonna run on this device. Meanwhile, theoretically, all 285 of those will work on the ROG Ally with no problem whatsoever. And of course, on top of that, you have access to Game Pass, which you don't have on the Steam Deck unless you load up Windows first. So if there are certain Windows games that you wanna play on a handheld, but you can't play on the Steam Deck, then yes, the ROG Ally is going to win in that regard. But another thing to bear in mind is another category we already talked about, which is controls. For example, if you wanted to play real-time strategy games, then I think the Steam Deck's gonna be a better choice because of those trackpads. And if you'd rather have the granularity of those Steam controls, for example, with first-person shooter games, then you may prefer to play on the Steam Deck anyway. And so while, yes, it is technically true that you can play more games than the ROG Ally, it's really going to come down to what type of games you actually play and where you'd rather play them. For me personally, all the games I play are like controller based. I don't really use the trackpads or gyro. And so because of that, the ROG Ally is going to give me a lot more flexibility. So I think in this category here, the ROG Ally is the winner unless you have specific needs where the Steam Deck will work out better. Okay, next up, let's talk about price. And this one's gonna be a little bit hard to judge between the two. Number one, we'll talk about the ROG Ally. This one is coming in at $699 for the high spec model, which is the one I have here, which has a Z1 Extreme chip inside. Now for $599, you can get the lower spec model, although that one won't be coming out until later this year. And this one only has the Z1 chip. And so you will have lower performance on that one than you will on this. And so because we have a different chipset between the two, if you do plan on spending $600, then it might make more sense to spend $700, you know, save up an extra $100 and get a much better performing chip instead. And so really, I think the one worth comparing to the Steam Deck is gonna be the Z1 Extreme. That's the $699 model, and it seems to be your best bang for the buck anyway. Not only that, this is the model that's gonna be coming out next month. So you'll have it in your hands earlier than the other one too. Now the Steam Deck comes in three different models. There's a $400 base model, then a $530 model, one, and then this one here, which I have, which is 650 bucks. And the main difference between these three is going to be the storage capacity as well as the etched glass on the high-end model. Now, if you want to save the most money, I'd recommend getting the lowest end Steam Deck model and then buying a micro SD card with a larger capacity, or maybe think about spending about $100 to swap out the SSD inside. And so if you are in a budget, that's going to be your cheapest way to go, about $500 for a really nice setup compared to $700 for the ROG Ally. However, if you were planning on already getting the high spec model, of $650 with the Steam Deck, then the additional $50 between the ROG Ally is very minor. And for that additional $500, you're gonna get things like a better screen and better performance as well. Now also bear in mind that the price points I'm talking about are the American prices. And so elsewhere in the world, the prices may fluctuate between one or the other. And speaking of elsewhere in the world, let's talk about availability next. Now this category is a little bit up in the air as well. For example, the ROG Ally is supposed to be available within Best Buy, but if they sell a bunch of these, they may have stock issues. And so because of that, you may not be able to walk into a store and just pick one up. Instead, we may have supply issues like for example, with the PlayStation 5. Now the Steam Deck is mail order only, but it's readily available in most regions. However, there are some regions like Australia where they still don't have it. And so in this category, I really appreciate the allure of being able to walk into Best Buy and pick one of these up. I think it's gonna give it a lot more of a mainstream connection compared to the Steam Deck. But all the same, if there are supply issues due to popularity, then it may never reach the stores in the first place. So I think this one is going to be a wait and see, but I do appreciate the fact that Asus is trying to get this shipped out worldwide, which is pretty cool. Okay, and for my last three categories here, these are really gonna be mostly speculation, but I still wanted to touch on them because I think they're important. Number one is going to be repairability. So Steam Deck has a partnership with iFixit, and so you can buy basically any part of the Steam Deck and repair it yourself. And to me, that's kind of a gold standard when it comes to repairability. And I'd be surprised if Asus has something as mature as that from day one. Now, of course, Asus has been in the game for a long time, and so they have an RMA process and all that kind of stuff. But all the same, I really like the DIY aspect of the Steam Deck. So again, I can't really give a judgment here, but I did want to mention that Asus has an uphill battle when it comes to matching what we have available with the Steam Deck. Now, next up is going to be the longevity or lifespan of each of these devices. After all, the Steam Deck has already been out for a year. So theoretically, this one's closer to getting an upgrade or a refresh than the ROG Ally, which still isn't actually out. However, one thing to bear in mind is that Valve has been doing an amazing job when it comes to paying attention to their device. We're seeing software up updates all the time, like multiple a week, which is kind of amazing. And on top of that, the chipset within the Steam Deck has basically become its own standard. And so a bunch of game developers are optimizing their games to work with the Steam Deck. And to me, I think that de-incentivizes Valve from making an upgrade to the Steam Deck anytime soon. 
And for me personally, I would rather have a long time between hardware upgrades, kind of like a home console. I would rather have it optimized and working really well. And then once the device starts to feel a little bit stale, then it's time for an upgrade. And I don't see that happening anytime soon with the Steam Deck. And even then, if a new Steam Deck does come out, I think this is still gonna be a very good device when it comes to playing indie games. After all, with really great power performance at that lower level, I think that we can play indie games on this for many years to come. Now with Asus, I think they have a different tactic, and that is that they're gonna give you the very best of the best. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a refresh of the ROG Ally before we see something from the Steam Deck. And that could come in a number of ways. For example, they might refresh the XG Mobile every year, or maybe they will actually do a new handheld every year as well, put in a new chip or kind of go from there. In the end, it feels like Asus is chasing that high-end gaming experience, which means that they're gonna have to refresh the chip to keep up with demand. Meanwhile, the Steam Deck seems to be more focused on optimizing what you already have. And for me personally, I'd rather have a device that I can play for years on end as opposed to trying to get a new one every year. But of course, the bright spot in that is that the Ally 2 will probably make the Ally 1 a lot cheaper, especially on the secondhand market. Now this last category is a little bit touchy, and so I'm going to preface this by saying this is only my own interpretations of the events as they unfold. And what we're going to talk about here is the trustworthiness of each of these companies. I think over the past year, Valve has done a very good job of being transparent with their customer base. For example, they've built up a reputation of under-promising and over-delivering. For example, when it comes to their shipment times, they actually were ahead of the curve most of the time. And then there were some other little things that really mattered. For example, they said that their device only had 400 nits brightness when it's actually brighter than the ROG Ally in real life. Now, when it comes to Asus, if you've been watching YouTube, there's been a lot of issues with them as a company. And a lot of those things are related to their motherboards and things that are way over my head because I'm not a very good PC gamer. But all the same, they do leave me with some pause. Now, from my own experience, looking at the ROG Ally marketing materials, it does feel like it's over-promising and under-delivering. Because if you read through their website or watch their presentation, you've probably come away thinking, wow, this thing can basically do it all. And the reality here is that there are some shortcomings with the ROG Ally that just kind of get glossed over. Things like battery life are quite a bit worse than on the Steam Deck. Now, in the end, I don't think you should put a bunch of trust or faith in any company. When you have people like Gamers Nexus and Jay's Two Cents basically writing off the entire company, that's a really bad sign, considering that they probably gave them many chances and had years of bad experiences before making that decision. And so in the end, when it comes to just investing into a product and a company altogether, I would rather go with Valve than with Asus based on the facts that we have right now. Okay, I'm gonna wrap things up here. I feel like I've been talking forever. That's the bad thing about having like 20 categories is that you have to talk about all of them in detail. But all the same, I hope these were all the details you were looking for. Now, of course, the last question here is going to be what device do I prefer over the other? And I think this is probably the most subjective of all the different categories. And for me personally, right now, I'm still gonna go with the Steam Deck over the ROG Ally. But that is with the caveat that I have the right to change my mind at any time. A lot of the things that bother me about the ROG Ally have to do with the software experience. For example, the bugginess of their command center drove me crazy over this past week of testing. And one of the things I'm most excited about, which is the XG Mobile, isn't even working on the device just yet. Now, hopefully it'll be ready by the time the device launches, but as it stands right now, one of my favorite features, or at least expected favorite features, is not even possible right now. But really, what pushes me over the edge between the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally is going to be the battery life. And that's mostly because I prefer to play lower end PC games on the Steam Deck, which means that I've never really worried about battery life on this device at all. And so I love the idea of being able to pick up the Steam Deck at any time and not worry about the battery dying as I play it. However, when it comes to the ROG Ally, because we have that nicer screen and processor, I feel more compelled to play higher end games. And of course, as a result, I'm going to have much worse battery life, which means I will have battery anxiety with the ROG Ally, but not so much with the Steam Deck. And so for me, if I only had one handheld PC to play around the house or maybe take on a trip, I would pick the Steam Deck almost every single time. But of course, that all depends on my own play style. And so you may want to play the best and brightest. And so because of that, the ROG Ally with maybe a battery pack is going to be the best choice for you. Either way, this was a surprisingly tough decision to choose between the two. But yeah, I think I'm still going to stick with the Steam Deck. But all the same, I'm very excited to see what comes out of the ROG Ally in the future as well. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video here. I know it was a long one, but I hope you got all the information that you needed. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.